Hi everyone, Trina from A Cosmopolite here to talk to you today about our body, our physical body, and really how it is a struggle. It can be and usually is a struggle for star seeds, light beings. But before I dive in, I am inviting you to take three deep breaths with me so that we can center ourselves, calm down our energy, and get on a similar wavelength. Plus, it's Earth Day, so happy Earth Day. So it'll be inhale in through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. And feel free to make as loud of an exhale as you want. It actually really helps with embodiment and letting go of energy, excess energy. So. I hope that that helped you. I hope it's as yummy for you as it is for me every single time. So yes, I want to talk to you all today about the physical body. It's important, okay? Um, this is something I struggled with my whole life. And my guides, my higher self in different ways was trying to bring me to awareness of my body around the age of 18 and up so the awareness a sliver of awareness came uh, when I was 18 and did my first detox I then did my first detox I believe when I was 20 20 or 21 and that's when waves of awakening came in, activation came in. And I do go into more detail on that in my free master class. And it's also going to be in my course, my online course. Uh, and I have other, other videos. But just a bullet note, okay? That at this age, I had my first detox. And activation and understanding of my body and being able to cleanse naturally came to me then again I was brought to my body again in when I was 25 and this was like a whole body thing because this was like a whole energetic soul everything alignment because this when I turned 25 in 2012 I was amongst the large collective of souls that were activated in 2012 <coughs> so during that time I became aware again of my physical body and then in 2013 I I devoted myself to doing a cleanse a detox and then working on my physical form i had never been sporty i had never worked out and i could see that my guides my higher self everything was leading me towards taking care of my physical form and working out for the first time and getting my body to a place that i felt happier about and more in alignment with everything so there's that um along the way since then there's just been droplets of understanding and then when i began to commune with crystals with nature and then moving on from nature into communing deeper with nature as in communing with a master plant teacher 
my very first master plant teacher was Mother Ayahuasca and still is Mother Ayahuasca. And she helped me remember so much, so much, so much so that um, after spending nine months with her, um, maybe actually two years later after my time with her, she had me channel instructions and she had me write out this long message slash like wow my hair just gets bigger <laughs> um this she just had me write channel forth messages about embodiment physical embodiment There is a very, very, very in-depth video on my YouTube. Um, so wherever you're watching this, you know, I have a very in-depth video on my YouTube. It's on a series I have called Blooming with Mother Ayahuasca. And the episode I'm referring to is episode two called Physical Embodiment. This is very important. And Mother Ayahuasca walks you through the key points of physical embodiment and why it's important. I'm going to give you a just, you know, like a quick summary here, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, now that I've gotten out there, let me just take a deep breath and see where she wants to start with that where all the plant teachers want to start with that because since communing with mother ayahuasca i then tapped into working with santa maria cannabis and i take her like it's funny to me she's more intense than um mother ayahuasca but you know that may sound crazy to some people but everybody's gonna have their own master plant teacher that I guess they resonate with the most and then like there's just going to be different plant teachers and they all have different vibrations but they are all here on the planet to help us you know they all have higher consciousness embedded encoded in the plant life in the plant kingdom and they are here to assist the human race in our evolution. So anyways, but we all will gravitate to different plant teachers and we'll experience them differently. So with that said, you know, I, I love Mother Ayahuasca. I love her so much and I can tell I have a bond with her and I've worked with her many times and it goes beyond that. Like, I truly feel and believe um, from what I sensed, this is a consciousness that's not from planet Earth, that but, but was seeded into the vine and the leaf. This, these consciousness were like, like I said, embedded, but it's not human consciousness. This is a, these are higher evolved souls that embedded codes into plant life here on the planet. And it makes me so excited to see that um, just last night, there's someone I recently met and she came up to the same intuitive feeling about it. Oh my goodness, and look at this happy kid come running over here to photo bomb or video bomb, whatever. <laughs> so, um, anyways, where was I going with that? So anyways, yeah, Mother Ayahuasca was my first plant teacher. Then it was Santa Maria cannabis and I stepped back for a bit. And then I worked with acid for a little bit and which is brilliant. It's almost close to Mother Ayahuasca. So after um, I worked with acid for a bit, um, it was like once or twice and I do think it's amazing and the high vibration of it is so close to mother ayahuasca but nothing 
still comes close to Mother Ayahuasca. I've yet to meet a plant teacher that is on that level. And with the expansive, multi-dimensional healing that she provides. Thank you, because I don't even, that just came out. So um, after acid, I then um, worked with psilocybin and psilocybin is amazing too so with all of these plant teachers over and over and over again these are the ones i have worked with thus far you know i have goals to work with more the ones that call to me but as of yet the ones i've worked with the message is the same in different ways the one strong message about embodiment continues to come forth from the plant teachers Even when you are experiencing these, these amazing consciousness, you know, of light, of information, of healing, when you start to feel their presence in your body and within your field, you become very aware of your body and it took me some time to really realize that because like I said, I always struggled with my body and we'll get to that in a minute. But it showed me that I could like heavily feel it made me even more aware of my physical form and how heavy the physical form is and how I'm not used to heaviness, density like that. So when you're experiencing these plant teachers, an amazing thing to do in the beginning, which a lot of people call it the come up or whatever, is, you know, you sit in a meditative, you know, state like sit down fold your legs or could even lay down but sit in a comfortable position and be mindful go within close your eyes go within and start to breathe I feel like I just got bit so start to breathe just like I showed you in the beginning of this video breathe through the breath, you become aware of your body. And just as it is taught in yoga, and when you do asanas and other aspects of yoga, you are taught of the union, how you can bring harmony and union of your mind and your body. So what the master plan teachers are also showing you that, to breathe through it and allow your body to just open up and surrender to the medicine of whichever plant it is all right so now that that's out the way let's let's ask and address the question you know why do star seeds why do light beings why do we struggle with our physical body and i you know i kind of answered it a minute ago we're really not you know we are actually very aware of how heavy it is here. We are aware of how dense 3D feels compared to other dimensions we have existed in, other planes of existence, you know? And so what's comfortable for us is to not fully be in our body. And when, she, when, when Mother Nature began to show me that as I went into nature more and then when I started practicing yoga and then when I started communing with master plant teachers I was blown away at how I had been living disembodied for so long complete completely disembodied in and out I'd come in and out in and out of my body and for some people that this isn't resonating with you're probably like what the fuck you know what are you fucking talking about but if this is resonating with you, you understand what I'm saying. You know, 
Um, sometimes it can feel like you're just living in your mind, but other times, and many times, really, it's just you are also, you're just tapped into other realms, and the the perception and reception of constant information flowing in from multiple planes of existence, of intelligence. I'm sure that resonates with you, whoever this video is calling out to. Oh, and let me back up. So then I started communing with Mother Ayahuasca. It was 2015. So I guess I was 20, 28, I think I was 28. And yeah, so off and on, I was still in and out of my body from 25 to age 28 and fully stepped back into my body at age 28. Fully brought in my consciousness and my essence into my physical form when I turned 28 after working with Mother Ayahuasca. And that is when she, and along with other guides and ancestors and my higher self and my twin flame and just a multitude of beings were showing me my path of creating She of the Throne and using my gift of communication and voice through this platform. There are layers upon layers upon layers of the meaning and significance of She of the Throne podcast. So, our physical bodies, it is our vehicle here on planet Earth. Our physical bodies are, is what is housing our essence. Just like I said, I fully stepped back into I anchored in my essence. Our physical form is our vehicle, our car, and our soul is the driver, right? So when you're not fully in your body, you're kind of, you're bouncing in and out. And yes, it helps in many ways because you can easily tap into other realms, but it can also make you susceptible to ill-intentioned energies as well you know it can make you more susceptible to other people's energies um, in various forms see I'm also clairvoyant so let me just share my experience I'm now 30 34 yeah I'm 34 so my experience in life is I've struggled to realize that I'm thirsty so I'm constantly reminding myself to drink something to drink water if I'm disembodied I don't remember that I'm thirsty when I'm more into my body and I'm moving my body um, I definitely can tell when I'm thirsty and it it definitely is stronger like the disembodiment slash or aka dissociation as it's called in um, psychology you can look at it that way which that's a whole nother avenue soul fragmentation versus just disembodiment but we can get into that in another video but anyways so that's a huge thing being disembodied usually like in colder weather because you're not moving as much um Especially if you're going through stress, if you um, are traumatized by something and still trying to work through the trauma or having a trauma response to something. Um, it could be in social settings. If you have a hard time being around others, it's possible to kind of allow yourself to come out of your body for a bit that way you don't have to feel the overwhelming feeling and knowingness of being surrounded by so many by other people and their energy um also in my experience uh, there's been times when i don't realize i'm hungry um not realizing 
realizing when I have to use the bathroom, that was a big one, but it's a big one, but it's also, it's from being disembodied, but it's also from, uh, it's a trauma response from being molested. So there is a deeper reason for that. Like, and I had to work on my, my womb, my reproductive organs and listening to my body and the signals. I'm way better at it now. So there's that. Um, what else? Do you hear that bird? Other quote unquote issues I had with being disembodied. Um, well, you're not fully here, so you're not fully expressing your essence. Therefore, you're also not fully showing who you are to those around you. But you already have a sense of knowing that you can't really or feel like you can't give your full expression to your family or your friends because they don't understand you or they think you're crazy or you know there would be no feedback or interaction or there'd be judgment right with disembodiment comes a lot of anxiety a lot of anxiety and then depression you know physical issues like ailments you know because you're not being in tune with your body so you're probably not moving your body as much as you should you might not be eating the right kind of foods for your body one of the huge things that these master teachers want us to know as we are here on planet earth incarnated as humans is that we are sovereign and these bodies are our bodies this body is my vessel i chose this vessel my soul resides in this vessel and in this incarnation of trino otero i claim this body and when you say things like that especially out loud this helps you in claiming your space claiming your body and helps you remember and reclaim your sovereignty because what can happen when you are disembodied and also disempowered right and don't remember that you are sovereign and if you have not worked through some things that need healing you become susceptible to other beings who want to manipulate you that feed off manipulation they're they're parasitic at the basic level they're parasitic and i talk more about parasitic energy in other videos we humans can be susceptible to other energies if we are not mindful and making conscious choices and living a conscious life mama aya stressed Cleansing out the body. You want to cleanse your body of toxins, of foreign beings, of pathogens, all kinds of shit. Old food, junk, whatever. That's number one. After that, there's quite a few things to branch into after detoxing. You know, you've got to fill your body back up with nutrition and maintain that. You know, don't just detox and then fill yourself with shit. Okay? You want to fill yourself back up with what your body needs and what's going to help you thrive, what's going to help your mind operate at the best level, what's going to help you in your spiritual life, what's going to help your, your vessel, your vehicle operate at optimal efficiency. Mama Aya also stressed body work, and there's all kinds of forms of body work. There is chiropractic care, yoga, massage therapy, trigger point therapy, craniosacral therapy. There's um, oh, there's tons, but I'm just like 
drawing a blank. There's dancing. There's a uh, aerial yoga and using like the the blanket, the ropes, and you know anything to move your body or help get your body back into alignment and get old energy moved and flushed out of your layers of tissue and muscle. And I'm telling you, please, please check out Blooming with Mother Ayahuasca Episode 2, Physical Embodiment, because I go into way deeper into this about physical embodiment and body work, okay? And the reasons why it's extremely important, but she stressed um, body work. I'm trying to remember the other things. These are all really important. Like I said, moving your body, really moving your body. And then there's conscious living, being present, and making conscious choices. You know, stepping into and claiming your sovereignty. These are all steps to take if you are someone, and, and trust me, there's a lot of people like this, even if they're not a starseed. But especially starseeds, you know, we are here for a reason. We incarnated here at this time for a reason. And you can definitely struggle with the physical body. So this video and the messages coming forth in this video is especially for those who resonate with this. And everything I'm talking about, I go more in depth in an online course that I've created. The curriculum is already created. I begin recording lectures tomorrow so it will be up on my university, a Cosmopolite University, very, very, very soon. And so if this resonates with you, please reach out. This is a 21-day course, a 21-day journey, where I gently and... Oh my god, I think that's a ladybug. Oh my god, that's so awesome. I gently and lovingly and, you know in a very well thought out way <clears throat> walk you through a, a flush of your body I teach you why it's important we go step by step through the body teaching you about the body and teaching you uh, to find out things about your body that are going to help you like ancient science just different um practices from around the world and bring it together to help you have a better understanding of your physical form so that you can be more in tune and give your body what it needs okay and then the second module is about your mind i gently walk you through a journey of your your mental space and how to cultivate healthier thoughts and a healthier way of perceiving reality around you and how basically how you can then switch your perception and manifest too and you'll see and I show you how the body and the mind are interdependent and then in the last module it's about your spiritual life your spirit so I guide you into this last part to wrap it all up and show you how your body, your mind, and your spirit are all intertwined. They're all interdependent. So just by eating certain foods, you can benefit the end result, your spiritual life. Just by, you know, focusing on your mental health, you affect your body and you also affect your spiritual life. When you focus on your spiritual life, you are positively affecting your mind and your mental health and your physical health. And I show you how in each module, there's homework assignments. I'm there with you. I interact and chat. We'll be sharing recipes, um, our experiences, just everything. There's going to be the stuff to read. There will be videos to watch, the lectures. It's just going to be a little bit of everything. And you get your own pace. So that is there. And I'm really, really, really excited about it. It's just in the flow with everything that's going on. And the women I'm meeting now. 
and how we feel the pull and know that we're here for specific reasons to help with the anchoring of new earth. And um, so there's that. Aside from that though, I already have a master a master class already available and it's free on my university. So the link, I'll have provide the links everywhere, but you can go and watch that free master class and get a little, you know, some nuggets from it and just get an idea of what would be in the course, the full course. But the full course is so much more expansive than that one master class, just letting you know. But aside from that, please check out at your leisure, Blooming with Mother Ayahuasca, episode two, physical embodiment. It's really important. Oh, hello. I think it was like a little bee. Um, you know, this course is for anyone that it's calling to. But I felt such a a pull to talk with fellow star seeds because I know from experience that I struggled. That I really, really struggled. I struggled with my physical health. Um, in the master class and in other videos, I mean, shoot, when I first started doing YouTube videos, I shared why I was in Italy and I was trying to, I was healing my body, healing myself from asthma and allergies and, um, past abuse, physical and emotional abuse, um, all kinds of stuff. So I've struggled with my body. I've struggled with mental health, you know, and I've definitely struggled with, my spiritual life you know i've struggled with accepting who i am with accepting the gifts that i have wanted to run away from the gifts that i have but every time spirit my guides brought me back to my body to start with my body and when i did everything else blossomed so this is what i want to gift to you this knowledge or this remembering and this course you know to remind you or to teach you to help activate remembrance within you about taking care excuse me taking care of your vessel this is extremely important because we are incarnated here our main awareness is here as a human being we are multi-dimensional beings right we are multi-dimensional and we are tapping into multiple realities and we bring in like memories and info from our other selves right but you know we wake up every day with the majority of our consciousness here it's important to be here in your body and as you do that it becomes really really magical and really yummy and what is possible here on earth it's amazing and to really anchor in our highly evolved awareness, the, the light, right? The light here onto planet Earth at this time. And to show others, the collective, that we can live differently. We can be differently. We can exist differently in harmony, in union with with the environment, with the planet, with the other creatures, the other beings, other beings and other realities, and with one another, other fellow human beings. Yeah. <sighs> the last thing that I will leave you with, I'm branching into some more guidance i usually normally do like soul evolution guidance soul coaching right but if you would like assistance and coaching in your physical health and your physical journey back to alignment if you want to move your body more if you want to work out more if you want help with nutrition please reach out to me I'm available for coaching you through this and we can talk more about it, about those opportunities. So there is that. I'm going to provide all the links for everything. Um, so no worries. And I'll just leave you with, you know, happy Earth Day. No, I didn't intentionally wear green. It's just colder today. 
it snowed the other day. I was like, what? Because literally when I made a video just a few days ago, it was warm and I was in a t-shirt out here. But anyways, happy Earth Day. Um, be good to yourself and be kind to one another. Thank you for being here. Namaste. Mitakawe oyasin. Aroha nui. Ciao.